In this video, I'm gonna tell you what I thought about Spider-Man Far From Home. And I wanted to let you know that this will be a spoiler. Spoilers review so if you haven't seen it yet maybe stop the video now and come back to it after you've seen it if you're new to my channel and want to see movie reviews parenting and life videos please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it so you don't miss anything in the comments below let me know what your favorite spider-man movie is spider-man far from home takes place shortly after endgame ends and we find that peter is struggling to find a balance between being a hero and being a teenager and at the same time he's trying to deal with the loss of tony stark if you've been watching my movie reviews for a while now you know that i don't watch other reviews on YouTube or read anything about it prior to seeing a movie because I don't want that to influence how I feel about the movie. I try to stay as objective as I can. However, there are some movies where it's just impossible to avoid the buzz around it or the negativity about it. And with this one, there was just nothing but good things. And like I said, I, I still didn't read any reviews or watch any YouTube reviews, but just being on Twitter and things like that, you know, people were just really loving it. So while I was excited to see this movie regardless, it didn't hurt that there was so much positive feedback already. All superhero series have a movie, and it's usually the sequel, where the hero is struggling with their new role as a hero, and this movie is no exception. Peter is really excited to go on a class trip to Europe with his friends, and at this point, he just wants to be a regular, normal teenager. And he has a really big crush on MJ, and he has this big plan to sort of reveal his feelings to her and hope that she feels the same so that they can be together. And let's face it, when you're a teenager, Teenager and you're in high school and you have a crush that is life that is all you can think about you know you wake up thinking about that person you go to bed thinking about that person and you know you try to talk to them if you can or you sit and just stare at them if they're in one of your classes so you can all you know look back at your high school days and think back to who your crush was and you know what that feels like and that's what Peter was feeling Nick Fury keeps trying to get in touch with him and he just does not want to be bothered you know his main focus is MJ and just kind of doing the high school friends girlfriend trip thing without having to be bothered with putting on a suit. I thought this movie did a really good job of not being too angsty. This is one of my big problems with the CW um, DC shows like Arrow and, and all them. I just feel like they're so full of angst and everyone is so broody and miserable and moody and it's just honestly hard to watch. I just feel like well then hang up your damn cape and stop being a hero if all you do is going to complain about it. I didn't feel like Peter was too angsty or whiny or annoying at all. I thought they kind of portrayed all his teenage struggles pretty appropriately and it wasn't like to some crazy degree where I just wanted that storyline to be over. I thought it was a perfect balance of you know, that emotional teenage stuff along with the superhero action stuff. So on top of dealing with all his teenage emotions, he's also trying to deal with the loss of Tony. You know, this is the second father figure that he had that is now dead. So he's sort of feeling kind of lost without him. And, you know, he was also his mentor. So he doesn't really have anyone he feels like he can kind of go to, especially with being a superhero and having somebody to talk to about what that's like. Tony leaves Peter with glasses that he calls Edith and wants Peter to fill his shoes and wants him to be the next Iron Man. And Peter just feels completely unfit to fill those shoes. And honestly, who wouldn't? I mean, Iron Man was so over the top, so smart, so brave that Peter just can't even imagine having to live up to that. I'm just a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And just feels like he comes short every time he tries. Having all of that self-doubt leads him to trust Mysterio, which turns out to be a huge mistake. So speaking of Mysterio, he is one of the main villains in the Spider-Man comics, but the trailers kind of made him look like an ally to Spider-Man. So I was really curious to see how they were gonna make that switch. Cause I really didn't think he was going to be like a good guy through the whole movie. And I wasn't really sure how I was gonna feel about Jake Gyllenhaal entering the MCU. I really haven't seen much that he's been in. And to me, he, I just kind of picture him as like a dramatic actor. So I wasn't really sure how he was gonna pull this off, but I honestly really enjoyed him. I thought he did a great job and his social media has, been kind of playful with him and Tom Holland 
and everything. So I kind of like that he's totally embraced this role in being a comic book character in these movies. I have to say, I liked what they did with this character. He created this bond with Peter and Peter felt like he could trust him and he was someone that he could talk to. You know, maybe he's filling that void that Tony left with him because he is a little bit older and he's been through this before. You know, he was a superhero on his planet Earth. So, you know, he feels like he has that connection. So I feel really bad for Peter that his trust was completely misplaced because Mysterio does a 180 and you find that he basically wants world domination because of course, what villain doesn't? So I thought it was kind of cool how he was basically a regular guy. He didn't have supernatural powers or anything like that, but he was this master illusionist and I think like a hypnotist and he was able to use drones and all this illusion tech to create something that wasn't really there. So I thought that was kind of neat to see all of that develop and how they turned him into the villain that he was. When Peter is first introduced to Mysterio, we're introduced also to the multiverse. I thought they were gonna do more with this and there was a lot of buzz on the internet about you know people being really excited about the multiverse and stuff, but unless I missed something, I didn't really see anything more with the multiverse other than the mention of it. And that could have been intentional. This could have just been a setup to future movies that are gonna get deeper into that, which would be kind of cool. I think my favorite scene in the whole movie was when Happy and Peter are talking on the plane and Peter just kind of lays out how he's feeling to Happy, how he doesn't feel worthy to, to take over as the next Iron Man, how he feels just completely inadequate, how he's never gonna li live up to being Tony Stark. And Happy says, you know, you can't, nobody can, even Tony couldn't. I think it was such a great heart-to-heart -heart talk between the two of them because Peter kind of could get on Happy's nerves with all this texting and so excited to be an Avenger when we look back at the movie Homecoming, but it was really nice because, you know, Happy gets it. You know, Tony was his best friend and he lost him too, so he knows how Peter feels and they were able to connect over that. And I think Happy really made him feel better, kind of gave him his confidence back that, you know, even though he's not Tony, it doesn't mean he's nothing. And then let's like talk about the scene where Peter needs a new suit and he's building it and it's so reminiscent of how Tony builds his stuff and Happy puts on Led Zeppelin. I understood that reference. And for him as he's putting together what, you know, what he wants for his suit to go battle Mysterio. And it was just like chills and goosebumps because you know, you're missing Iron Man so much. So to have the music and to see, you know, this kind of activity go on was, was really cool. I thought this movie had great acting, great pacing, great effects, great humor, and honestly, I don't have anything negative to say about it. So if you haven't had a chance or you're not sure whether you wanna go see it, I definitely recommend that you go see it and stay for the credits because there are two post-credit scenes that you don't wanna miss. If you wanna see more movie reviews, parenting and life videos, please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.